So you have an exam coming up, you study, study, and study, only to fail on the big day. But there's actually a faster and easier way to learn everything. You see, there are three big obstacles that usually stand in our way. Obstacle number one, you don't have motivation. To solve this problem, we must understand why we humans hate studying in the first place. You see, in our brains, there's this thing called the default mode network. Over time, this part helped our species survive by making us conserve as much energy as possible, aka avoiding all the hard tasks out there, especially studying. Why? Because compared to many tasks that we do in our day-to-day -day life, the studying process suffers from something called dopamine deficiency. Basically, studying is a hard task that doesn't usually give us enough chemical reward to make us pursue it in the future. Now, Nikola Tesla was actually a master when it came to learning and researching without ever getting bored. The most common tool Tesla used was actually music. Studies have shown that listening to classical or lo-fi music during study sessions can drastically improve your motivation. But unfortunately, there are times when listening to music is just not enough. So you have to do one thing. Choose to learn in the most efficient part of the day. Studies have shown that our brain is in peak productivity between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and between 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. But even if you get the right motivation to start studying, you'll soon stumble upon obstacle number two, you can't focus. Now, the real reason why many of us can't focus is because we all suffer from something called attention residue. In his book, Cal Newport explained that after you switch from one activity to another, usually a part of your brain is still thinking about the previous one. Yet, if you empty your mind and do nothing before learning, all of your brain power will go to the study process. But how do you do that? Well, before starting your study session, look at an object in your room and try to empty your mind. Also, take some deep breaths while you're at it. At this point, you have the motivation and the focus you need for studying. But soon, after some time of work, you'll run into obstacle number three. You don't remember what you've just studied. So how can you prevent this from ever happening again? By using Dr. Andrew Huberman's technique. In his studies, Huberman has discovered that the learning process is made up of two parts. The first one is called active engagement focus. This is the part when you have to focus exclusively on the subject and try to understand it as much as possible. When you have that focused approach, some neurons in your brain send a chemical named acetylcholine to other neurons through synapses. Basically, the synapse between them is now categorized as important by the brain. Yet, you can only stay focused for so long. According to Huberman, it's ideal to keep these focused periods to a maximum of 60 to 90 minutes. Now, the second and most important part of the learning process is called neural rewiring. In this part, you just have to take a break. That's probably something you already do, but you do it completely wrong. Because after the focus periods, you actually have to take a 20 minute nap. When you do that, those important synapses get even stronger. But there's more than that. When you are tired and you have studied for a long time, you can enter something called the REM state of sleep, AKA the state in which we dream. Studies have shown that the more we dream, the more we tend to remember what we learn. Einstein used to do something like this, but he was on a totally different level. He used to sit on a chair with a pair of keys in his hand and try to fall asleep, but as soon as he drifted off, the keys would drop, waking him up. In that moment, he used to note the first thoughts that came to his mind, which often led him to the answer he was looking for. Now, besides this technique, it was discovered that we can drastically improve our learning process by using all of our five senses. Basically, when we study, we usually only use sight and maybe hearing, so there are still three that are left out. Yet, a perfect way to activate all of them is by simply chewing gum. So, chew a specific flavor of gum while you learn, and then chew the same flavor on the exam day. Now, all of those tips will really help you in the long run, but what if there's no long run? What if the exam is tomorrow? You don't have time for any breaks. Well, there are some simple tricks that can help you go through the whole subject in just one day. Number one, you see, most of the time, we only use half of our reading speed. That's because when we read, we actually think about each word out loud in our mind. It was discovered that we can actually read much faster if we don't think about each word in particular. You might be a little confused right now, so let me just show it to you. Pay attention to those words that are popping up on the screen. 
You probably didn't get all the words, but you understood exactly what I wanted to say. So the next time you are going through lectures, put a pen or your finger under the words and go through each line of the book as fast as possible. Number two, Vilfredo Pareto discovered that only 20% of the effort creates 80% of the results. So after reading each page, make a summary of the most important things that you've learned there. Number three, if you have certain words or numbers that you want to remember, write them down by using your non-dominant hand. This will give your brain a hard time and will force it to learn the information faster. Number four, when you review what you've studied, don't just read the lecture again, try to remember it yourself. A fun way to do that is by giving ChatGPT your lecture and asking him to create some questions. Even if you don't know the answers, that frustration will signal your brain that you need to remember in order to avoid future struggles. Which gets us to another problem that we all face during those stressful periods, the fear of failing. Studies have shown that when we are overthinking about failing an exam, we are actually left out with less brain power to study. So you have to stop overthinking about it. Unfortunately, it's easier said than done, but the good news is, I know just the video that could help you with that. <laughs>